But in this game, the creature of Kapu Cave, you'll be going to the big island of Hawaii, so things will be a little different. For instance, to get from place to place, you'll use a GPS map. The coordinates for two locations have been pre-programmed into the map. But to get to other locations, you'll have to find and enter their coordinates into the map yourself. In this game, you can use your cell phone to call Ned Nickerson. He's a really good friend of mine. And you can call the Hardy Boys. In fact, by calling the Hardy Boys, you can actually become one of the Hardy Boys. And by calling me, you can become me. You'll discover that using the phone to switch back and forth like that will come in very handy in this game. There won't be a camera in this game. In this game, you'll have a chance to spend and earn special money called Big Island Bucks. The change purse at the bottom of the screen will tell you how many bucks you have at any given point in the game. When you spend your Big Island Bucks on something, the appropriate amount will automatically be deducted from your change purse. When you earn Big Island Bucks, they will be added to your change purse. When you're ready to start playing, just click on the plane tickets and say aloha. Also, by clicking on Interface Designs, you'll be able to choose how you want the game window to look. You can change the UI skin as often as you like by returning to this option in Game Setup. Your great uncle sure had a thing for eyes, didn't he? He only had one eye? A one-eyed dentist. Okay. <gasps> what was that? This must be the painting that goes in that empty frame. I just want to look through this one book. Mmm. Yum. Mm. Yum. Gosh, these things are good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Hello? Anybody here? Hi. The door was open. <gasps> Murder? Ah! That should keep you guys quiet for a while. Dive on me, will ya? Let's see how you like some of this. You guys are messing with a wrong human. Oh, yeah? Well, take that. Ow! Ouch! Ow! That wasn't very nice. Hey! This has got to be a painted conch. Another painted conch. Yes! This doesn't seem to fit. Guess I need a different part. That doesn't go there. That's not right. A librarian's tail. Hmm. Something Bruno Ballet wrote in that Tired Eyes book mentioned the librarian's eye. Ah! Here we go. A librarian's tail. Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Iggy, come here, Iggy. Got something for ya. Come and get it, Iggy. Iggy, oh, Iggy. Iggy, how about a nice, juicy loquat? I have the feeling in this case I can judge a book by its cover. Someone locked the door. Hmm, huh. looks like I'm going to need to find 24 more of these. This must be where I'm supposed to put all the glass eyes I've found. I'd better take these with me. I better take this with me. Let's see how we're doing. All that lightning must have knocked out my phone. Missed. Rats. Too slow. Shoot. Gotcha. Check. Did that. All done. Still have to do that. Can't check that off yet. I haven't done that. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Clever. This name doesn't fit the clue. That can't be right. That doesn't make sense. A loquat tree. I don't want to bug those wasps again unless I absolutely have to. One loquat's all I need right now. If I need another loquat, I'll just come back. And that was the extent of your conversation? Mm. Mm. Ah, you look kind of cute. You're styling now, Iggy. Nice threads, huh, Iggs? Let's see what dressing him in this outfit does. The name that opens Jolly Roger meetings opens me. <laughs> I've eaten six Cocoa Kringle bars already. That's plenty. Do I really want to eat another one of these? I don't think so. If I eat any more of these, I'm going to be real sorry. That's got to be it. The time is right, I hope. There, I'm no dummy. That looks like the right name. Let's hope Neil is lying down by now. Bingo. Smells right to me. Hopefully this will givens me a clue. That's the front door, but I'm not leaving until I figure out what Mr. Skeleton Man was up to. Your great uncle really had a thing for glass eyes, didn't he?
Did your great uncle by any chance wear a glass eye? Looks like I'm going to need 25 of these. Phantom of Venice. Here you go. Thank you. I just found a glass eye. Did Bruno Bollet wear one? There must be another way out. Whoa, that clap of thunder was huge. Looks like I'm going to need some paper. To figure out if there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm going to need some paper. One for Renee and one for me. Oh, I've been bitten so many times, I'm starting to feel a little... <sighs> If that spider is poisonous, I could be in trouble, because I'm starting to feel kind of... <sighs> May 31st? That's today. But before you get started, maybe I should explain some of the things you'll be seeing on the screen. On the lower left side of the screen, you'll see icons for the things that I, Nancy Drew, need, like my inventory, journal and task list, cell phone. In this game, you can use your cell phone to call Ned Nickerson. He's my boyfriend. And you can call Bess Marvin, one of my best friends who's sharing this adventure with me. In fact, by calling Bess, you can actually become her. And by calling me, you can become me. You'll discover that using the phone to switch back and forth like that will come in very handy in this game. Another thing, in this game, you're going to have to find your way through a cemetery. To keep from getting lost, just look for my shadow. It will tell you what path I entered on. When you want to make a phone call, just click on the cell phone icon and you'll be able to call anyone whose number I've come across during the game. Just click on a name and the phone will do the rest. Other icons may appear down here as well, like a coin purse or an especially useful device that you stumble upon in the course of the game. As always, your mission is to solve the mystery by stepping into my shoes and deciding my every move. When you're in the center of a room, you can turn around in a circle to see the whole room. Just move your cursor to the left or right edge of the screen and you'll automatically move in that direction. By the way, you can turn off this auto-move feature in the Game Setup menu. An arrow pointing forward allows you to go forward, while a back arrow allows you to step back. Sometimes up and down arrows are available too. Give it a try! Find the forward arrow and check out Mr. Wogglewoggle. He's my teddy bear. When you want to turn around, move your cursor to the bottom of the screen until it turns into an arrow that looks like a U-turn or a back arrow, and click. I always use my magnifying glass to scan my surroundings for clues. When it turns red, I know I'm onto something. When your magnifying glass turns into a question mark, you can talk to someone. When it becomes a hand, you can use it to open and close things, pick up objects, and move things around. To see how this works, move your mouse over this scene until the magnifying glass turns red, then click to zoom in. See how the magnifying glass turned into a hand when you rolled it over the key? That means you can pick it up. When you click on an object with the hand cursor, that object gets added to your toolbox. Good work! You're a natural! To see what's in your toolbox, just click on the tool icon at the bottom of the screen which will light up whenever you've added something new. If the All tab is active, you'll see all the objects you've collected during the game. Now click on the tab with the eye on it. When the Eye tab is active, you'll see only those objects which you might want to look at over and over again, like letters or messages. Now click on the Hand tab. When the Hand tab is active, you'll see the objects that you can use to manipulate other objects. Find the key in your toolbox and click on it. See how the cursor turned into the item you clicked on? Use the key to click on the lock on my suitcase and you'll see how good I've gotten at packing. To return an object to your toolbox, just click on the tool icon, then click on the open toolbox and the object will go back into storage. You can close the toolbox by clicking on the square in the upper right hand corner. In this game, you'll be able to take pictures using someone else's camera. The notepad at the bottom of the screen is where I keep reminders to myself. Click on it and you'll see what I mean. If the book tab is active, you'll see my journal, which is where I keep all my observations concerning information I've gathered and people I've met. If you click on the clipboard with a check mark and if you're a junior detective, you'll see a list of what I need to do. Organized person that I am, once I've done something, I check it off. Questioning suspects is something all detectives need to know how to do. In the game, to get people to talk to you, all you have to do is click on them. Let's say I've clicked on Mr. Wogglewoggle here. Our conversation will appear in the text box below the scene, with his words in blue and my responses in white. Click on a response and see what your suspect says next, like this. Excuse me, Mr. Giant Person, but you seem to be pretty nosy, especially for someone who hardly even has a nose. 
I mean, compared to mine. Excuse me, Mr. Wogglewoggle, but I'm not nosy. I'm just very curious. You think so? Usually people only call me nosy when they're hiding something. And you seem to be pretty gabby, especially for someone who doesn't even have a mouth. If there are a lot of words in the text box, use the scroll box on the left to move the text up and down so you can read along. Before you can start playing, you need to decide whether to play as a junior or senior detective. If you choose junior detective, you'll get more hints than you will if you're a senior detective, and the puzzles will be a little easier. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. Oh, but don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. The menu screen is your starting point for the game. To access the menu while you're playing the game, just click on the menu icon on the lower left side of the screen. When you open the menu, you'll have several choices. Click on New Game to begin your adventure. Click on Load and Save Game to save your current game or to load a game that you have previously saved. When you click on this option, you may save your current game by typing in a name. For instance, Game 1. Then clicking on Save. You can save up to 35 games. Or you may load a saved game by clicking on the name of the game to highlight it, then clicking on Load. A word to the wise, periodically save your game, just in case. Click on Continue Game to resume your game. For example, if you saved your game or interrupted gameplay to access the game setup screen, Click on Continue Game to start your current game where it left off. When you make a game-ending mistake during the game, and don't worry, everyone does, you will automatically go back to the menu screen. Click on Second Chance, and you'll return to the game where you'll be able to try, try again. Click on Game Setup to make the volume of voices, music, or special effects more to your liking. You can also turn off closed captioning, the words that appear during the game in the window at the bottom of the screen, and Auto Move the arrow that appears at the side of some screens that allows you to automatically move in that direction. Click on Game Credits to see the names of all the talented people who helped make this game. Click on Help for tips that will help you play the game. To turn off the game and return to the desktop of your computer, click on Exit Game. If you haven't saved your game, you'll be asked if you want to do so. You won't have an alarm clock in this game, but forget about sleeping in. You're going to be way too busy for that. Why don't you just... <coughs> Why, hello, young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. Yes, ma'am. Another question. How may I be of service? Why, Miss Bess, hello again. I'm delighted to report that I am indeed. Well, it's a pleasure to report that I am he. This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, particularly now, I might add. I'd prefer subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, so what is it you want to know? Well, now, I was certainly his best friend, but I cannot honestly say that he was mine. Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, has always been a source of pleasure for me. Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became, and the less concern about their negative effect upon others he became. Now, as a doctor of medicine, I am not only accustomed to dealing with the abnormal, but I find that I am actually drawn to it. I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed Bruno's outlandish personality. Although, at the same time, I fear it may have played a role in his demise. You see, he died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. 
Dying of a heart attack is all too common for people who are socially isolated, and Bruno Bole had most certainly become that. No. Given Bruno's advanced age and the absence of any indication of foul play, an autopsy was deemed unnecessary, and the body was cremated according to Bruno's wishes. Perhaps I am. Perhaps I am not. I'm sure someone as charming and attractive as yourself has her share of secrets, too. Am I right? Crews are organizations whose primary purpose is to put on parades during Mardi Gras. They also put on fabulous parties. Very private parties. Members only. Some consider crews to be private clubs. Secret societies is a term others have used. However, back in the 1990s, the city decided not to issue the Jolly Rogers any more parade permits, unless they opened their crew to pretty much anyone who wanted to join. So, refusing to be blackmailed, they chose instead to simply not put on parades anymore. As far as the city is concerned, the Jolly Rogers no longer exist. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Of course not. A little lively discourse would brighten this gloomy evening considerably. Why, yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he showed it to me once. Said it had magical powers. Said owning it was going to allow him to live forever. I thought it was utter nonsense and told him so. Well, he didn't appreciate that at all. Refused to talk to me for a full two weeks. It was quite beautiful, actually. Life-size, perfect in form and clarity, like a diamond almost. No, he was terrified that someone would steal it from him, so he told no one its location. Not even me. Tell me, Miss Bess, what do you know about that crystal skull? Well, much as I'd like to believe that skull holds the key to immortality, I'm afraid Bruno's passing proves it's worthless. Although it would make an attractive paperweight, as I recall. Tell your friend not to give it another thought. In the foyer of his house, just inside the front door. In fact, indeed it is. I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking and carrying on, until finally I sent her out of the room so she could summon an ambulance, and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing, so I pulled him away from the door away so I'd have more room to work on him, and began chest compressions. I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. Uh, yes, he was. That's always been a bit of a puzzlement to me, too. Wait a minute. Why, yes, yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so... Perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Iggy. What's Iggy? Iggy. Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it in the vent system. It would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement. In any case, Bruno once told me he was training Iggy. Said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. No, but then I rarely ever saw Iggy. Moreover, no. Had he died of an overdose of the medications I had prescribed, the manner of his death would have been quite different but he died of a heart attack. Of that, I am certain. However, I know for a fact that Rene is deeply involved in the practice of hoodoo. And as Bruno's housekeeper, she had ample opportunity to use it against my poor old friend. Young lady, never, ever underestimate the power of suggestion. If a person believes in something, even on a subconscious level, Fantasy can easily become fact. And who knows what rubbish Rene filled Bruno's mind with? Drink this, 
Don't eat that. This brings good luck. That brings bad. Day in and day out. Even if he said he didn't believe a word of it, who knows how much his subconscious was absorbing. He was very old and vulnerable. So could Rene have caused Bruno to have that fatal heart attack? There's not a doubt in my mind she could indeed. I see. Believe me, young lady, it's quite miraculous that I've remembered this much. It's been a pleasure, I assure you. Feel free to drop by any time. Good night. I've enjoyed our conversation immensely. No. Yes, certainly. I surely do not know. That would be fine.